everyone and welcome to my new tutorial. Um, this time we're going to be doing the bean stitch. Um, I tend to find that this pattern looks um, the most effective when using lots of different colours um, and doing one row or two rows of each colour. I think that makes it look really nice. Um, obviously you can do it in just all one colour but personally I like lots of different colours all together. So just any yarn that you like. And again, this is just a personal preference, um, but I like to use a half size smaller hook than the yarn recommends. So this is all Stylecraft Special DK, and obviously the hook for that yarn is a four millimeter. But I'm going to be using a three and a half millimeter hook. Just this seems to give a tighter stitch, obviously, and it doesn't leave as big a gaps in between the beans as it would if you were using a four millimeter. So again, it's just a personal preference. I'm gonna be using a half size smaller than the yarn actually recommends. So let's go. So I'm just going to be doing a sample piece, obviously. Um, you could use this for anything. You could use it as a blanket, but obviously remember it would take you quite a while because it is quite a small stitch. Um, but it'd be great for little pot holders or anything like that, or little dishcloths or face cloths. It would be really nice if you were using a cotton yarn for those sorts of things. So to start with, you're just going to do your slip knot. And again, I always show this at the beginning of my tutorials. And you're just going to pop the tail end over your finger and wrap it around your index finger. And then cross it in front of that long end and hold on to it. And then wrap the yarn over your finger again and hold with the tail end and then pull that loop over that front loop on your finger and pull your finger up to secure. So for the bean stitch you want to work your foundation row to any length that you like as long as it is an odd number. So as long as you like so long as it's an odd number and then you want to add two chains at the end. So. We'll just do our foundation chain and to do a chain you simply yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through, it's three, four and you're just going to continue to work your foundation chain until it gets to the desired width of the project that you want to do. So obviously I'm just doing a sample one so I'm only going to be doing a, quite a short chain but again an odd number and then add two to that odd number when you get to the end, once it's at the width that you want. So I've done a chain now of 17, and then I'm just going to add two to the end. So one and two. And then we are going to start creating our beans. And um, so to do this, you're going to insert your hook into the third chain from the hook. So we're going one, two and this is your third one here so you're going to pop your hook straight into there and then you're going to grab the yarn and pull up a loop and it's like a puff stitch so you're going to grab your yarn and pull it through and then you're going to pull that yarn up so that it's level with the other one loop that you've got so you've now got two loops on your hook and it's not really loose you can see just how long that loop is there that I've got on my hook and then you're going to yarn over and insert back into that same chain space and yarn over and pull up again keep it nice and loose so that you can pull it up like this we've now got four loops and you're going to do it one more time so yarn over and insert back into that oops and insert back into that same chain space and then yarn over and again keep it nice and loose and pull up nice and tall. So you've now got six loops on your hook. So once you've got your six loops you're going to yarn over and pull through all of the loops on your hook just like this and then you're going to chain one just to secure all those stitches. So a chain one and that is your first bean created. So now you're going to skip one stitch one chain, sorry, on your foundation chain, you're going to skip this one and we're going to work into the next one along. And so once you've done your chain one to secure, you're going to go straight into your next bean. So exactly the same way as before, we're not going to chain anything between and we're going to go straight into the bean. So once you've skipped one 
and you're going to insert your hook straight into that next stitch. You're not going to yarn over first, you just put your hook straight in and then yarn over and pull up nice and tall. Yarn over, insert into that same space, yarn over and again pull up nice and tall, yarn over, insert, yarn over and pull up again. So we've now got our six loops that we need and you're going to yarn over and pull through all of the loops on your hook and then chain one to secure your next bean. And again, you're just gonna carry this on all the way along your foundation chain. So now we're going to skip one and we're gonna go straight into the next one. And remember, you don't yarn over because that's what makes the beans face. These will all lean this way and then the next row, the beans will all lean the other way, but that'll be more apparent, obviously, the further on we get. So skip one and straighten and yarn over and pull up. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up nice and tall again. And one more, all into that same space and pull up. And then yarn over and through all of the loops on the hook and a chain one to secure. And again, skip one and work straight into the next stitch. So straight in and yarn over and pull up. Yarn over, insert back into that same space. Yarn over, and pull up. Yarn over, insert into the same space again. Yarn over and pull up, we've now got six. Yarn over and pull through them all. And then a chain one. So pause or rewind if you need to and just work all the way along your foundation chain and I will meet you when you get back just towards the end of your row. So I'm getting towards the end of my row, I've just done um, a bean here and I've got two chains left and I'm going to work my last bean straight into that last stitch there just before the slip knot. So your normal bean. And then yarn over and through all of the loops and then your chain one to secure. So now I'm going to change colour and to do this I'm just going to get my new colour So I've got to the end and I'm just going to pull my new colour straight through that loop. I'm just going to leave the tail hanging just for a moment and I'm just going to pull down and tighten up that pink and then pull down and tighten up on this coral as well. And then I'm going to turn and now I'm going to chain two. So I do one just to secure the color change and then I'm gonna chain two. And again, this is a personal preference but I really like to tie my yarn when I change color. So I'm just gonna literally tie these two ends together. And obviously you can work the ends in as you go along if you want to. Um, I'm one of these crazy people that leaves it all to the end and then does them all at the very end. And I wish I wasn't one of those people, but I am. So you can see we've got all of our beans from the previous row and they are all pointing towards the right slightly. So now we're going to work back across the other way. Um, just like we did before really. Um, but this time we're going to be working in between well, not in between the beans, but just where you did your chain one to secure um, from your previous row, we're going to be working into those gaps just there. So we're gonna go straight in to this space just here. I'm gonna go straight in and then yarn over and pull up. Remember keeping it nice and loose. Yarn over, insert into that same space and pull up and yarn over again insert into that same space and pull up and then you're going to yarn over and go through all of the loops and then a chain one 
to secure. And again, we're just gonna go straight into our next bean. And remember, we're working in the, um, the chain one from the previous row. So you're going to insert and pull up yarn over and insert and pull up. So we've got four and now we've got six. And again, we're just going to yarn over and pull through them all and then a chain one. And we're just gonna carry that along all, all the way to the end. So if you want to do that, and then I will meet you when you get onto your last bean from your previous row. So I've completed my beans coming back the other way and I just have one more to do at the side of this last one here. And what you want to do is find the top from that um, chain that we did from the very beginning when we turned at the very beginning and worked our way back along the foundation chain. Um, there should be a relatively obvious um, V. Let me just pop my hook in so you can see it a little better. Just here. Um, it should be quite easy to spot for you. Um, and that's what you're going to be working this last bean into, just here. So just like before, you're going to insert into that stitch and then you're going to yarn over and pull up and just create your bean as normal. And then yarn over and pull through them all and do your chain one. And so this is how you should be looking so far. Your first row should go to the right and then your row that you've just done should point slightly to the left and it should be nice and, and textured and, and squishy obviously because they're nice puff stitches. Um, and now I'm going to change colour again and we'll, I'll just do that colour change with you one more time. And I am literally just going to pop my hook through that bright yellow and I'm going to pull that through that last loop there. And then I'm going to turn and I'm going to chain one just to secure the colour change and then I'm going to chain two. Now obviously just remember if you weren't changing colour and you were doing another row in that same colour you would only need to chain two. You wouldn't need to chain three. Um, if you weren't changing colour because that extra chain is literally just to secure the colour change. So that's another colour change done and now we're ready to work our way back along this row and again it's exactly the same for every single row you're going to do your chain two and then you're going to go straight into the chain one that you did before on the previous row to secure you're going to pop your hook straight in and you're just going to do your bean as normal. So if you want to do that across the whole of your row once more, and I'll meet you one more time as you get to the end just to, just to reassure you on where to go for your last bean stitch. Okay, so I've just worked my way back along once more and I'm now ready to do my last bean at the end here. So you just want to find the edge of your last bean that you created on this previous row, which is obviously just here, and you're just going to do your last bean into just to the left there. Oops. So that is your third row done and you're just going to carry on in exactly the same way um, until you've done enough rows that you're happy with really. So I'm going to do a few more rows with some different colours just so you can see how it works up but that's pretty much the tutorial you just follow follow that pattern all the way all the way up. Now the bean stitch unfortunately doesn't give perfectly straight edges I mean, they're not far from straight, but obviously because you're doing a chain two here, but then the next row will be a, a bean at the end, you're not gonna get absolutely perfect straight rows. So it's one of those things that really does benefit from having a little border put around it at the end, but it's worth it because the pattern itself looks really pretty. 
So I've worked a few more rows now and this is how it's starting to look. I've done one, low, uh, one row of each colour that I was using and you can see it has like a nice um, zigzag and the puff stitches just make it nice and nice and squishy. Like I say, it'll be a really sweet blanket and I just like it in lots of different colours but in just one colour it would still look just as beautiful. But I really hope that you've enjoyed the tutorial and if you have, just remember to give me a quick thumbs up and if you have any questions or anything or any requests for tutorials, just leave them in the comments below. And thank you very, very much for watching and remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. But I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.